the Pali word that we translate as conceit, mana, is not quite the same as what conceit means in English. It's simply the sense that I am. And there's a skillful sense of conceit and an unskillful one. The skillful one, which is actually necessary for the path, is the sense that I am competent, I'm doing this, I can do this, I am capable, I am responsible. Other people have done this, they're human beings, I'm a human being, they can do it, why can't I? So you need that in the practice. When you're sitting here and focusing on the breath, you have to have the confidence that, yes, you can do this. And that you really want to do this, and that you're concerned about your future. That's another aspect of conceit. You're going to be receiving the results of your actions, so you want to do them well. But this sense of conceit, of the sense of being competent, it has to be based in reality. It can't be just a floating confidence to kind of give you for answering questions right when you're a little kid and put gold stars all over your paper. That can actually get in the way. Think of that cartoon they had with a mouse. Over the cartoon it said, Teenage Mouse, and the mouse is stepping into a trap and is saying, I can so get away with this. Of course, you know what's going to happen. The trap is going to snap shut on him. So you have to have some basis in reality. This is why the Buddha says an important part of the practice, in addition to conceit, is having a sense of yourself, of what your capabilities are, and where you are in developing the, the qualities that are needed to practice, where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. He lists six qualities. The first one is conviction, the extent to which you really do believe that the Buddha was awakened. You really do believe in the principle of karma, that whatever progress is going to be made on the path is going to be through your actions. You've got to be responsible, because that's what the message of the Buddha's awakening is. Human beings can find true happiness, but it requires that they develop some qualities that are within us in a potential form, but really having to actualize them. So you have to ask yourself, to what extent are you really convinced of this? At the very least, you're asked to take this on as a working hypothesis. Base your actions, base your decisions on this hypothesis. The Buddha himself said he couldn't prove the principle of karma to people. The best he could do was give a pragmatic proof that if you take this principle on, your actions are going to change, all for the better. Whereas if you don't believe in the principle of, of karma, what reason is there to be careful in your actions? When you're not careful in your actions, of course your actions are going to get sloppier. So see your actions as important and remember that the principle of karma is not like a traffic law where you can't park on this, this side of the street on just Tuesdays and Thursdays from 4 to 6. It's 24-7. While you're at the monastery, when you're away from the monastery, your actions have results, depending on the quality of your intention. So it makes sure your intentions are good. That leads to the second quality the Buddha asked you to look at is your virtue. To what extent are you actually intentionally causing harm? He gives five types of harm that you want to avoid across the board. Killing, stealing, illicit sex, lying, taking intoxicants. But there's also the harm that comes by inciting greed, aversion, and delusion in yourself by the way you look at things, by the way you listen to things. How careful are you as you go through the day? What kind of fantasies do you indulge in? And are they actually helping you on the path, or are they not? That's an aspect of virtue, too. It's not the kind where they would, for the monks, would declare as an offense, but it is harmful to yourself. The third quality is learning. How much do you know about what the Buddha actually taught? And not just learning, try to memorize some 
the passage, especially the short things that are you find really inspiring or they're particularly useful for problems you know you have, so you can bring them to mind. This is one of the reasons why we memorize the chants, and particularly the, the chants where we have translations. It's good to have that kind of stuff floating through your head instead of all the garbage that comes in through the media. So learn the Dharma, try to remember it. And if you find yourself weak in this area, well, this is an area where you can, you've got plenty to explore. The fourth quality is generosity. How hard do you find it to part with your things? How hard do you find it to give of your time, give of your energy for other people when they ask for it, even when they don't ask for it, but you see that they could use it? What gets in the way of your generosity? And sometimes it's good to make a habit of when you feel that you're holding on to something and part of you knows that it's not really necessary, but another part wants to hold on. Give it away. And that way you get to know what's standing in the way of generosity. The fifth quality is discernment, seeing where you're causing yourself suffering. This, of course, requires that you work on your concentration so you can see things more clearly. But it's not just a matter of having learned things or having thought them through. It means actually seeing when you're about to do something that's going to be unskillful. How can you talk yourself out of it? Now, if you feel lazy about doing something that's skillful, how can you talk yourself into doing it? This is the real test of your discernment, because otherwise you can have all that learning and you can have all, your, all the stuff you know about the Dharma. But if you can't actually use it to push yourself in the right direction, it's pretty useless. So this is one area where if you want to learn how to trust yourself, you really have to work to become more and more effective at talking yourself into doing things that you know are right, even though you don't want to do them and to talk yourself out of doing things that you know are wrong, but you like doing them. And this directly connects with the final quality, which is quick-wittedness, your ability to come up with solutions to problems on the spot. There's a lot that's not taught in the text. There's a lot that's not going to be taught in Dharma talks. This is a quality that the Ajahns stressed again and again that you've got to learn how to think things through on your own and come up with solutions. Learn how to read your problems to begin with, figure out what the problem is. Remember when I was small, we moved to a town that had a town newspaper. It was the first time I've ever been in a town that had a town newspaper, and they had an Ann Landers column. And I was always impressed by how wise her answers seemed. And then as I got a little bit older, I realized, well, they were handing the question to her. It had taken them time to formulate the question. And once the question is formulated, it's pretty easy to see what the answers are. So when you face a problem in your life, sit down and try to formulate the question. What exactly is the problem here? Use your powers of observation. Use your discernment. Use the guidance that is provided by your learning. And once the problem becomes clear, then the solution will be there. All too often our problem is that we don't see the problem where we haven't sat down to think it through. We just know something's wrong and leave it at that. But if you try to sharpen the outlines of the problem, sharpen the outlines of what you can see is going on, then it's easier to arrive at the answer. So look at yourself. To what extent are you lacking in any of these six qualities? Conviction virtue, learning, generosity, discernment, quick-wittedness. Where are your strengths? Where are your weaknesses? Use your strengths to work on your weaknesses. And that way your confidence in yourself as a practitioner will not be just empty ideas. It won't be just floating around. It will have a solid foundation. So as you try to 
rely on yourself, depend on yourself, trust yourself in the meditation, you'll actually have something that's really trustworthy to keep you confident. <laughs>